has the government response been good? It has. It's been cautious. It's been scientifically based, evidence based, based on the correct information. It has changed a bit in the last few days because of a paper from Imperial College which suggests the spread is going to be worse than was predicted here. And all the government can do is put actions in place. They're pretty considered, not the sort of blanket reaction you get in some authoritarian states. So on the whole, I think they've done a good job. What about testing at borders? Border controls have never really been introduced here for sanitary purposes, health purposes in the UK. What are you going to do? You could pick up people with fever. Many of those will just have a cold. You can suppress fever with paracetamol anyway. And you can't do the coronavirus test rapidly in the transit zone. So you're going to have to let people in. So it's, there's no point doing that in a sense. The Imperial College report at the weekend changed things. Published in The Lancet, it's the first time a mathematical model looks at the worst case scenario, the disaster endpoint. And I think that is the problem with it. If you take data and you ask epidemiologists and mathematicians to come up with various models, they'll produce the worst case model. And then there's anything else in between. And that is what we've got in the report. But it certainly has spooked our leaders into taking more drastic action. The, the NHS works at capacity. So the number of beds, the number of ITU slots, the number of ventilators are based on the fact they'll be occupied nearly 95% of the time. Most European systems have much more spare capacity. That's something we don't have the luxury of in the NHS. And I think in the long term, we have to reflect whether we want to change that. Will the virus come back? This is a very good point. We don't know, to be honest, but I don't think it will. Uh, there's no evidence in China of any mutation, but time will tell us. Uh, is there a second wave, as there was in 1918 with the flu epidemic? The second wave killed more people than the first wave. These are imponderables. We just don't know. We'll have to keep things going until we get a reduction in the number of new cases per day, which will probably take about a month. And then I suspect things will get relaxed a bit. Will the world change after COVID-19? To a certain extent. But I suspect when June comes along, the sun's out and the birds are singing, the flowers are up, we'll look back on it and say, well, that was a bit rough, but we've all got through it. And I think that's the important thing. No panic. Let's just go through it and see how it goes. It may not be as bad as forecast. But remember, politicians, whatever the political leaning, have to prepare for the worst. And so the media report the worst. Um, what usually happens is in between. There's lots of things that's happened in my lifetime that really fizzled out and we wondered what the fuss was about.